Welcome to this episode of Fleet Friday. This week we will be taking a look at our equipment support unit, or ESU for short. This vehicle is used by us in engineering workshops, uh, mainly by our equipment technicians to attend both incident grounds and uh, stations to repair uh, defects on small items of equipment such as branches, uh, lengths of hose, as well as uh, breathing apparatus sets. You'll see more of that as we get into the, into the rear of the vehicle. You will see that it's also fitted with dual amber and blue warning lights. Uh, this is because it can also be used as a temporary breathing apparatus support unit, uh, as well as uh, the role that it has in engineering workshops. The vehicle itself is based on a 2018 Vauxhall Movano long wheelbase high topped conventional panel van that you can buy from, from, from your local dealer, but has been converted by us to suit the needs uh, of, of, of the role that we need it to carry out which you'll see more of in a moment. So now inside the cabin uh, of the equipment support unit, it's uh, a very conventional cabin obviously that you'll find on on, on an, any van, um, but obviously we've got a few additional extras. So starting at the top, we can see the uh, Tom Tom that's linked with critical control. All of our vehicles have these, uh, can be used for, uh, they can send us directions to incident grounds and also works as, as a tracker. Behind that is a new um, item that has been started to be rolled out across the the light fleet. It's a virtual uh, logbook, so to speak, so a driver can swipe on to it uh, to to record who's driving the vehicle, where it went, uh, information like that. Moving down, we can see the the 999 attendance at scene button for the blue lights, as well as uh, a switch to control the front and rear. Uh, amber warning lights. Uh, up on the top of the screen here we can see these are what we call window pods so they're a specially designed uh, unit that's stuck onto the glass of the windscreen uh, which provides the high level um, warning for the, for the amber warning lights that we've we fitted. Uh, and that's about it for the uh, for the cabin of the, ve of the vehicle. One other addition is uh, is this 240 240 volt uh, input that we've placed underneath the driver's seat so uh, this supplies the 240 volts throughout the rear of the vehicle that you'll see in a, uh, in a moment uh, this can either be hooked up to a shoreline uh, from a station or when it's charged here at workshops overnight or it can be um, plugged into a generator on an instant ground to to provide 140 volts uh, at so before we move in as you can see here we carry a spare dry powder and co2 fire extinguisher for uh, use on the appliances if we ever if they use one we can just go in and change it straight out behind the cabinet and the bulkhead here you can see our entry or a spare entry control board we carry two of these on on the vehicle so these are uh, breathing apparatus entry control boards that the firefighters use uh, they can slide tallies in uh, from the side so they know which firefighters are inside a building say in breathing apparatus it also gives them information such as um, time remaining on their cylinder um, and, and useful information like that so we carry two spare those on the vehicle all the time as you can see the predominant theme is breathing apparatus so it carries a, a selection of, of breathing apparatus sets in in two different forms the uh, bottom row that we can see here is what we call fully made sets so these are sets that are ready to go they can just be pulled out the cradle a general check can then be completed and they can be put straight onto to an appliance what we mean by a, a, a complete set is that it's got the the air cylinder which is the blue the blue cylinder here and the back plate or the carcass which is the black part here up the top is what we call the obviously the carcass sets now so these are uh, not ready to go they, they require a cylinder to be put onto them um, to be made up before they can be used you'll see the cylinders that we carry uh, in a moment but we carry nine fully made sets and nine uh, carcasses um, if, if we go to a big incident where especially uh, asbestos is suspected where a lot of uh, sets need to be 
impounded because they've obviously got the risk of asbestos exposure this vehicle can can turn up on on the on the incident ground and replenish the the appliances that have used the sets so they can go back on the run more or less straight as they as they leave the scene uh, each of these sets are plugged into a charger so they've got telematics on them which uh, gives the the BA entry control officer a lot of information about the the set how how much air is left in the in the cylinder uh, and information like that so they all have to be charged up so now in the back of the van uh, looking towards the the, the uh, side entrance door we've just come in uh, the van when we when we bought it was a conventional bare panel van uh, that you would get from your from your local dealer we've had to convert it into the van that we needed it to be because obviously the, of its unique role within our fleet so that included insulating the inside of the van so behind all of the plywood paneling there is is insulation it just allows for the for the back of the van to to keep out any any sort of dampness um, or, or frost in in low temperature conditions because obviously we carry obviously BA sets we don't want to expose them for to any undue moisture um especially frost dur during the winter months so we also have uh three um heaters that we've put in the back of the van just to take the to the frost off of it so to speak so in all the white trunking that you can see running around the entire van is uh 240 volts so um, we keep all of our chargers for the ba sets in these and obviously double sockets at the back for any um, hair dryers, engravers, whatever that may, may be being used, as well as another couple of sockets down the front there. So now looking at the uh, the front workbench, this I this sort of area is is mainly taken up with uh, torches and branches and hose coupling parts. We've also got a kosh cupboard, which is the control of substances hazardous to health. Uh, cupboard which is the yellow one there which contains all of the uh, cleaning products used on the the equipment the, uh, the BA sets uh, so it keeps it all nice and safe and secure so now actually moving on to the to the drawers of the uh, the workbench in the uh, top one here we can see a selection of batteries so we carry triple uh, sorry double A triple A D C nine volt uh, square batteries uh, for torches, smoke alarms, what, whatever they may be needed for. These bigger square batteries are uh, used for our MoFlash scene safety lighting. The one below, we've got torches for our wolf lights and uh, AED starter kits and defibrillator pads, spare, spare ones of each. Uh, all of our uh, frontline first away appliances carry a defibrillator. Uh, and it comes with obviously the pads and the starter kit if they're ever used for whatever reason we have a spare set ready to go in this one again more torch parts so we've got spare torches for the appliances breathing apparatus set torches wolf lights and um, torches that go on top of the firefighters helmets in this one we can see uh, small branch parts so bezels shims washers screws uh, in that side and parts for hose couplings over this side uh, in this one we can see some breathing apparatus straps some more parts for torches bulbs fuses for the main scheme radios for the uh, where critical control talk to each appliance so now underneath the uh, storage uh, the sorry the workbench we can see that we carry a spare resuscitator and oxygen therapy kit a complete complete unit spare first aid kits and spare, a bag full of spare neck neck collars so if, if an appliance uses any of the equipment again we can just go out and, and give them a, a replacement uh, to get back to get them back on the run as soon as possible up the top of the uh, the bulkhead over the passenger and driver's compartment we carry snow socks for the vehicle for use in in snowy weather uh, spare rolls of barrier tape uh, nitrile gloves, a new firefighter's helmet, a spare um, harness, 
and spare life jackets. So the life jackets can be used by the crew of this vehicle if they're working near water's edge or to replace defective ones or ones that may have been used on, on a, an appliance. So now looking back down the vehicle towards the back doors, we can see the other side of the van that carries the remaining um, spare breathing apparatus sets, the fully made ones down the bottom, the carcasses on the top row. And as we move on back, we've got another workbench. So this one is, is deeper than, than the front one. Um, and this is where the general checks on the breathing apparatus um, sets is conducted before they're put onto a vehicle. Up the top, we can see charging, uh, charging stations for uh, batteries for the telematics of the um, breathing apparatus sets and uh, handheld radio chargers. We're just going through a process at the moment of, of changing handheld radios or uh, fire or incident ground radios so this charger will be replaced with for the, the new charger for the for the new um radios but again everything is is plugged in all the time so the batteries are always charged up and we can see underneath the other um heating elements so underneath the main bench at the back of the vehicle we have storage for breathing apparatus uh related items so in this drawer, we have log books for entry control boards, breathing apparatus sets, inserts for tabards, spare pens for the log books, coveralls and wipes, small parts of the breathing apparatus sets or the you know the most commonly uh, used parts. So buckles for the harnesses and um, some small valve parts there face fitting items charging sockets um, on, and plugs for the for the BA balls anti-entanglement devices which sit on top of the cylinder to stop any wires or objects getting caught between the cylinder and the and the, and the back plate Uh, down in this one, we carry spare, what we call Dissolvo bags. So these are used in the decontamination kit. And what happens is if the firefighter believes that they have been contaminated by either asbestos or a chemical bodily fluid, they bag up their kit in these bags that has a red bag inside it. So everything is double bagged and then this whole bag is then sent away um, to test to see if um, the item that they believe that they got on them is actually on them especially in the case of asbestos and then if need be it can be cleaned um, disposed of by incineration and, and such like or you know put back into service if it is deemed that asbestos say wasn't present so we carry loads of spare ones of them down the side we carry spare oxygen bottles so these work with our casualty um, resuscitation and oxygen therapy kit so we carry two spare bottles and then below the bench we carry uh, disrobe packs for if uh, a member of the public is contaminated by a chemical or that they can then remove their clothing and then we can give them temporary clothing in the form of like a poncho um, you know to maintain their dignity and then we've got a spare filler length a little step ladder for use in the vehicle and that concludes the back so now around the back of the van with the back doors open we can see um, it's sort of split into two halves down the bottom is where we carry all of our spare breathing apparatus cylinders or BA cylinders so we can carry up to 20 cylinders in the back of the vehicle here um, as well as uh, a selection of uh, blue valises for breathing apparatus or white valises for use um, for putting up the shelters rescue paths on on water rescue vehicles air tools and anything like that that are not for breathing apparatus use so we can carry a selection uh, down the side here we carry two 
complete decontamination packs. So the red Dissolvo bags that we see earlier, this forms part of this kit. It's all used in the decontamination process uh, of, of an incident. We carry two complete packs. If, a, if a, Again, if an appliance uses one, we can just go out, swap it over, get them back on the run straight away. And then moving up the top here, we can see two scene lights for illuminating the back of the vehicle as well as the Perspex screen. So the, the Perspex screen really uh, is there for, for three reasons. One, it allows a bit of natural light to go into the back of the vehicle uh, when the back doors are open. Two, it's a weather protection for whatever reason. If the back doors of the vehicle are open, it stops any rain going in to the, the back of the vehicle. Uh, because of the electrics, the 240 volts that we have in the vehicle, we don't want any, any water getting in. And thirdly, if this vehicle is used as a BA uh, support vehicle, uh, it can be where a firefighter can stand on the other side as, as a reporting post. Um, so it's, it's, it's really a contingency vehicle as, as well as a, an equipment support vehicle. But that concludes the tour of the equipment support unit. I hope you found it informative and uh, see you again soon.